Carol Roth, I know we have a lot to talk about. So just quickly, uh, I woke up this morning uh, looking at gold prices and uh, was kind of uh, kind of impressed on how they're skyrocketing. And I remember a conversation with a gold guy who said, don't ever, ever look at gold and say, gee, I hope it goes up because of my portfolio. And we were talking about $3,000 an ounce. And he said, do you realize how crazy the world has to be for gold to be at $3,000 an ounce? It's over 2400 now. We're headed there quickly. Yes, I remember a discussion that you and I had with a group of people, I believe, uh, in November of last year when people were si- saying a similar thing. Yeah. When is gold going to break out? And you and I were both communicating the idea that gold is really a hedge against all kinds of insanity, things like inflation, things like the cr- you know crumbling stand- standing of the dollar, um, things like war. And so when you see that gold ha- is continues to rise, even in the face of things like um, rising yields on bonds. I mean, normally there's a little bit of pushback there. We saw that as bond yields had gone up, uh, people were were moving away from gold because you weren't getting that same uh, interest rate. You know, mm-hmm. gold doesn't doesn't produce an interest rate. So there's a different reason why we are looking at gold. And some of the things that we're talking about are a bit more structural perhaps gold playing a bigger role in things like settling international commodities, uh, trades and trading between countries, uh, particularly the BRICS nations. But again, all of the things that are are these signals, none of them are good for us here in the United States. No. You know, if the signal is, oh, well, it's just because of you know trade, well, that's not good for the US dollars reserve currency, and that's not good for you know inflation over the long term and our purchasing power. So so all of these things do have a mechanism. And when you see you know, so much um, interest in gold over the past few months, when it has been very steady for, uh, for a while, that breakout is giving you additional information. And like you said, in this particular case, I think that information is coming from lots of different places. Oh, yeah. And not one of them is good. Yeah. Uh, one of them that is, you know, we're, we're, we're hitting the point where um, our – our debt, the interest on our debt, is going to be $1.6 trillion a year. That's more than Social Security. It's the biggest line. It will be the yeah. top line on our budget now is just the interest because we have an adjustable mortgage in America. Uh, and there's the, it, the, the Fed, I think, is out of bullets. Yeah, I've been arg- making this argument now for a couple of years that the Fed's monetary policy um, isn't effective because they are they are trying to control demand, and so many of the issues that we've had are on the supply side. Yep. Additionally, we had been headed, and I kind of think we're we're in today this period of fiscal dominance, and as we've talked about before, that just means that fiscal policy uh, plays a bigger role in what is determining to determining economic outcomes than monetary policy. On its its face, that is sort of neutral fiscal dominance. But in our particular situation, it's, it's very bad. It's because of the debt. It's because of the deficits. And it's because of the fact that we have these massive interest payments and continuing deficits that need to be financed and are creating this vicious loop. And as we know, there are, there's not a lot of ways um, to finance the debt. Right. There certainly are not a lot of buyers. And we saw that this week, there was a treasury auction for 10-year treasury notes that did horribly. It was rated a D by Brooke Santelli at CNBC, oh who's very, very smart. Um, D, by the way, I don't know if you know this, is right next to F. So that that is a very bad position to be in. And We've always said, been triple A, haven't we? Uh, Were we no, always, the, the, for, I mean, so for, 10 the, years so ago. The, the debt, so there's a debt rating, and that's done by the rating agencies. These are the bond auctions. This is when the Treasury goes okay. out to the market and says, you know, how is it that, you know, how did, how did we do? How many buyers were there who were on, okay, standing on right. by who want to buy our debt? Okay. And so this happens on a regular basis. And, you know, people who watch this, they give those auctions a grade to say, how did we do? Were there a lot of buyers? Were there not a lot, lot of buyers? So this particular time, there were not a lot of buyers. And the banks and securities dealers had to sop up 
a lot Jeez. of that debt, which just is, you know, it, it's pushing us to this path of monetization again that we're, we've been talking about. And that means that we're buying our own debt and that is inflationary. So even if we're not getting things like rate cuts that potentially could stoke inflation, you're going to get this monetization of debt, with, which is inflationary, which is why I've been arguing that inflation is sticky and it doesn't matter if the Fed goes high or low, it's getting us on either side until the government gets its act together. They are driving the show. It is that fiscal dominance. Tell me about the um, consumer price index and the uh, the wholesale <laughs> index. The, the, the numbers don't make sense. For instance, um, fuel is not an inflation. Is it in inflation right now? Look at the price of fuel. What do they mean? So, you know who loves the data coming out of the government right now, Glenn? The government. <laughs> Oscar the Grouch. You know why? Because the data is trash. <laughs> it is tr absolutely trash data. Not only have we seen adjustments on a regular basis, the scope of which we have not seen in a long time. There's there's the 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 numbers always get adjusted, right. but we have not seen these these massive adjustments that we've been seeing. We also have a phenomenon um, where people and entities who are respond to the surveys, where they collect the data, don't want to do that anymore. Either they don't want to be bothered, they don't trust the government you know, with their data, whatever it is, they don't want to give up their competitive advantages. So they're having fewer people respond to these surveys, which means that, that there is more of this <clears throat> projection and biases in the survey. So that's why we saw, you know, this the CPI, which is the consumer price index, that's where they go out and they survey households that came in higher than expected. Um, we all expected that it would be an uptick because as you said, we know the price of, of oil and other commodities have been going up. So this was not a surprise to any of us who live in the real world. And so that was somewhat reflected in that data. And certainly the, the market had reacted to that and said, oh, well, you know, if that's the case, the Fed can't cut. Then we have an, another measure of inflation because they measure it in different ways. And this is the producer price index, PPI, which is the wholesale measure of inflation. And this is supposed to tell you what's coming because, you know, the, the inputs that go into your right. goods and services um, give you a, a sense of what's coming down the pike. And this was the one that was the head scratcher because it was not higher. There's a huge disconnect between these two measures always, but even a bigger disconnect. But the one, as you said, that everybody was going, what's going on here related to energy? So there was a, on floating around social media yesterday, there was a chart about the seasonal adjustments, again, right. this, this manipulation of the data that they do. And if you looked at that, it showed you that gasoline for the month was down 3.6%, I think it, it was. Uh, but if yeah, you didn't, right. So if you didn't seasonally adjust it, it would have been up 6.3%. That's a really big swing. That's like a 10% <laughs> swing between the two of them. So again, Oscar the Grouch data here. Um, certainly we're going to get another measure in a couple of weeks here, one called the PCE, the Personal Consumptions Expenditures Index. This is the Fed's quote unquote favored measure I don't know, maybe they like the people who do it better. It's a little bit more broad, but that's what they tend to make their policy decisions on. But the media and everybody's focused on the CPI, so it makes it very difficult for them, or at least adds another layer of difficulty because they're going to do whatever it is that they want to do when that is going up for them to say, well, inflation's under control. You know, we can go ahead and start to cut interest rates, which is why I think everybody needs to be paying attention to their other tools which relate to the balance sheet and debt and what they're going to do th there because that's just a different way of them to be accommodative. They're not going to do anything. They're, I mean, he's not addressing inflation. Uh, Biden is spending more. He's now, you know, again, forgiving more debt, uh, trying to get people into houses. I mean, he is, we're just giving away the store at this point. He, they are, they are, We've been saying this since day one. They have been working in the opposite direction. If you wanted to help the Fed 
get inflation under control as the government, you should have been working with them. You should not have been running up deficits. You've been doing putting into place policies that help supply issues instead of hurting supply issues. Every single thing this administration has done has been a barrier, not only to you keeping your wealth and your purchasing power, to but what it is the Fed has been doing. And that's the fight that the Fed's been having And I just think at some point they're going to need to be real explicit and say, we can't do anything until our partners get on the same page. But, you know, everything's political. So, you know, that's not going to happen. Uh, All right. When we come back, um, she's actually been invited uh, to be uh, somebody who testifies in front of Congress. Carol Roth in front of Congress testifying as an expert by the end of the month on small businesses. And she's going to be talking um, about the FinCEN, uh, you know, thing that's going on with LLCs and, and small businesses where you have to register all this information or you're a criminal. Yeah. And it's going to devastate small businesses, small LLCs, etc. And it affects so many people. She's going to be testifying. But here's the good news. She wants to use information that maybe you have. Uh, to back up her testimony. Now, I think our banks are fine. Everything's doing really well. Uh, just a quick update. The uh, AT&T Tower in St. Louis uh, went for uh, $3.55 million. That's that's a good solid $2 a square foot. Sold for $3 million. It was sold for over $205 million. Uh, just about 15 years ago. So, no, there's nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Carol, let's talk about small business. Yes. Take me through, again, in case people don't know what FinCEN is and what they're now requiring people to do, this is the criminal arm of the Treasury. Uh, And they're asking everybody who has an LLC or a small business to register. Yes. So this is called the CTA BOI rule. And basically what it said, and this was passed by Congress, uh, was vetoed by President Trump. And then they went back and Congress overturned the veto and gave this arm of the Treasury, which is charged with preventing financial crimes, uh, sort of free reign. And they said, okay, we're going to create a database. And if you have any sort of entity, if you have an LLC, even a single member LLC, an S Corp, a C Corp, any sort of entity, uh, and you're a, a business, you need to register with us the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, because we want to prevent money laundering and cartels. And of course, you know, I'm sure all of those people are going to self-report, right. but they exempted all, all the, the best cartels do. Yeah, all that they all do. Yeah, They're like, yeah, well, yeah. you know, we're going to do these things, but we're, we're going to make sure that FinCEN right. gets our information. Um, but they exempted all the big businesses. So this is unfairly targeting small businesses. So the updates, a few things are what are happening, and we can certainly go uh, more into this, is that I have been invited by by the House Small Business Committee to be an expert to testify and, you know, obviously testify against this and how bad this is for small businesses and how unconstitutional at the end of the month. What I am doing is I am bringing statements from small business owners because it's great to hear my statement, but if I can show up there and say I have 100 or 200 small businesses and here's what they have to say about this and they're all outraged, that holds a lot more weight. So anyone who owns a small business, if you support small business, go to carolroth.com slash CTA. That's carolroth.com slash Charlie Tango Alpha. And I've made it really easy. I've given a, a, a form letter that if you want, you can borrow some of it. You can borrow all of it. You can borrow none of it. But I'm going to show up at Congress with this stack from small business owners to say, you've heard what I have to say. Now listen to what small business owners from across the nation have to say to try to get them to overturn this. Now, can In I, addition, could I, because I, I mean, I, I'm, today's not the day for me to write something. Yes. Because uh, I'm in a very bad mood. But I could, uh, could I just write to you and say, yeah, here's what I'd like to say to Congress. I'm working my ass off so I can keep my family afloat and the families of all of my employees. Yes. And, 
And you guys are just making my life more and more difficult with more and more restrictions and and uh, guidelines that nobody in Congress passed and are not good for the American people. I've please, had please, it. Please do. Again, carolroth.com slash CTA. Please do that. And I actually think being in a bad mood is a good time to write it because that's when <laughs> you're going to be honest and that's when you're not going to pull I'll, any I'll write, punches. I'll write today then. I'll, yeah, I'll... so – so, and, and speaking of helping, so one of the things that you did that was very generous, Glenn, is you offered to put forth a lawsuit, and I agreed. We cannot do that because we have been outspoken. But the good news is, is that there are two new lawsuits against us that have also popped up. So we have a lot of really good momentum here okay. and uh, appreciative to you for all of your help. Okay, so give me the address again. It's carolroth.com slash cta correct correct okay carolroth.com slash cta if you're a small business owner go ahead vent a little bit you'll take it to congress thanks carol